Well hello again everyone, uh, welcome back and thanks for visiting. Um, today I'm going to move on a little bit with the 148th Spitfire, um, Mark 1A as you know, uh, and I'm going to look at the wings uh, and the um, upper and well, the upper and lower sections of the wings. So essentially from step 21 forwards, um, I'm going to be very boring and dull and I'm not going to put any of the uh, guns in. Um, and I'm going to leave this completely not cut out, but you can if you want, obviously there are options to do that. We're going to have undercarriage down as well, uh, and I'll talk about the fitting of the wings and we'll get on and do that. Um, as you know, um, we've got up as far as, as making this up. I've test fitted it into the fuselage here, um, which you can see. Um, and that's gone in pretty nicely, to be honest with you. At the moment, I'm putting some... Um, varnish onto it so that I can put some uh, pin wash I think it's called where you highlight the the ribs and so on and so forth I think that's called pin wash um, and then this fuselage section will, will get made up and, and sealed up but what I'm going to do is use this as a template for the wing sections in a minute so we'll get back to that in a, in a second um, and we'll so we'll move on um, just quickly. Ooh, let's not try and throw things all over the place. I'm going to try and do this on camera because I went off camera quite a lot the last time, and I don't want to do that anymore. So um, first step is to get the wheel wells um, attached in step 21. So B11 and B9. Now these are handed, so it really is quite important to get them in the right way round, such that when they're on, they um, the a pointer here these walls are vertical so I've I've been quite careful to set those up so they're on the right sides um, and they're, they're a pretty snug fit um, but they tend to fit where they touch um, and so on so it's really quite important to get that particular section there let's just zip in on that so that you can see it and hopefully you can see that um, get that u-shaped section in exactly the right position so that we can make certain that we uh, we do um, get it get it properly fitted. Um, what I'm going to do is use a little bit of. Um, I've just got this quick setting, so I'm going to try that and see how that goes. I've primed the inside of this as well. You may be able to see that. Um, and um, so, as you'll know, with the model I'm doing, one of these wells will be white and the other will be black because of the way that the colouring was. So we'll just make sure we get that sighted properly first and I'll put a little tack in just a little bit not a lot and see and just see how this works see how quickly it bonds and it is pretty swift you can still move it around still it's not it's not that it's not that fast that you can't shift things around I'll glue it properly in a minute but we'll put this section in as well and again I'll do the same thing it'll give us an opportunity to just tip to test fit the wings, the, the wing tops, um, so that we make certain that those are all fine. Um, yeah, they look all right. So let's just have a quick fit of the wing. Now the wing tops fit where they touch, and there are no locator pins as well. So that's that's kind of a problem. Um, but there is a location for the wheel well in the top of the wing. You can see that circle there that you can you can make out. Um, so it will help to get the wing properly located, which is no bad thing. Um, and then hopefully everything looks looks good from there. So yeah, those those have gone all right. I think that's that's pretty okay there. Um, so I can go around the rest of this. Make sure we get them in. properly. I normally use the standard cement but I, I bought this now because I've seen other people using it um, and I guess it's probably a good idea to have. So there we go. So that's step 21. Let's turn it around and orientate it the right way. Hopefully this is all on camera still. I've been quite careful paying attention to where the um, positioning of the camera is and where my hands are in relation to that. So step 22 is um, part C17, which um, I've done in my best Blue Peter style to prepare earlier. So we need to turn that round and make certain that we put that in the right way round. There's a little 
I'll show you actually where, where you can make sure this goes in properly. There's a little line just there that tells you that you, these, this rib here, I think it's the main spar, actually goes in between those two marks there. And this is where I think that sits like that. That looks, well, that looks reasonably convincing, I'd say. Now there is a bit of play on this actually, looking at it. You can, I don't know whether we'll just perhaps be able to zero in a little bit and show you that. But you can see that this, well, that's in the wrong place. That moves backwards and forwards slightly, which we're gonna to have to be careful. I want to try and get this as central as I can. So um, let's make certain that we do that, shall we? So, again, I'll just drop a little bit of um, quick setting in there. Yeah, that looks okay like that. And I'll not do that side. Not really necessary, I don't think. Not in a high stress situation there now, are we? Do both sides there. And that's that bit done. That's coloured correctly, so that's where we want to be there. So that's step 22 taken care of. Step 23, we're going to need. C30 and C31, hope you can see them okay there. Hopefully that's possible, there's a bit of a shadow. with. I'm using a computer table, you see, so it slides in and out, as you can see. Um, so C30 and C31, I've already painted them um, aluminium. So 30 and 31 are there. We have to pay some attention to getting this, uh, these parts in the right way. So let's put C30 in to begin with. Actually, that's slightly nearly broken off the sprue, so let's just cut that back there and then we can have a look at where that actually needs to be in terms of... Let's have a look at the magnifier a minute. Um, I wonder if you can see that there. Yes, you can just about. I'm, I'm amazed that you can just about see that, which is um, fair enough. I think... Well, I'm not really sure about that, to be honest with you. That looks like sprue, and yeah, I'm going to take a risk on this. That looks like sprue. I'm going to cut that out there, get rid of that, and give that a quick sand down with my super whizzy glass file. I'm sure you've seen these things before. I noticed these um, on another modeling page the um i think we all know the modeling guru that is nigel um him from gloucester um i keep learning stuff from him it's very good actually so uh, there we are move along from there so now i need to get this orientated correctly so that yes that should be the right way around give us some light here move that away a bit more and I have to be careful with tweezers here because I know that there's going to be a chance it's going to disappear into the um, into the background so that needs to go the other way around I would say. Yes, so that sits. Oop. Where's that gone? There it is. We know these things are going to fall out, don't we? That's what happens all the time. So, 
this spigot here or, uh, goes that side in there. This spigot here sits into that hole there. So let's see if we can make that happen, shall we? Let's hold my finger under there. Gives us an opportunity to perhaps get this in the right place. So that's not quite going. Oh, well, there we go. Nearly there. That's that looks about right there, I'd say. I'd say that looks about right. Yeah, actually what had happened is that this panel had just leant backwards towards the back of the um, wing section. Mm, I won't do that just yet. I'm going to take a chance on that not falling out. Right, so C31, I'll cut that one out as well. Where's my C31? There it is. Those of you might be wondering and having noticed this pit, this bit here, um, you might be saying, why is that not in the aircraft? Well, because it wasn't called out for the variant that I'm doing. So um, that's the reason why. That's fallen down somewhere safe. That's also good. So, have a quick look at that. I think I've cut that off at about the right section. Again, give that a quick file down. Up and out the way now. Gives us some light. There we go. And then we can drop this section where it's supposed to go. So, on the undercarriage of the full sized aircraft, these arms obviously, one side was connected, this side to the undercarriage oleo leg and the other was connected to an actuating lever such that when the undercarriage was down there was a little vertical indicator post that raised on either side of the wing it was about two or three inches high and was colored red um, and Let's try again. It was coloured red and it sat on the top of the wing so that um, the um, pilot could see a visual indication that his undercarriage was actually down and deployed. Um, he had a light, I think, inside it. No, no, that's not worked well, has it? He had a light inside his, um, uh, his cockpit to show him, but this was an additional thing because it was mechanical and... If the undercarriage didn't go down, then um, the little spigots wouldn't rise up and out. So uh, he was able to tell. It's a very clever little thing. Um, and I'm going to put them in when I put the wing tops on um, before the completion, because I think that's a nice little additional feature. And when I do the Katare 132 scale model, I shall do likewise. As you'll know, there is also this is proving problematic, isn't it? There is also an indicator, a mechanical indicator of the same sort um, for the flaps, because clearly they're split flaps on this aircraft, and if the, the flap wasn't, uh, or if the flap is deployed, the pilot can't actually see that it's deployed, so he needs another indicator to tell him, and so that's why the little panel pops up 
when you when you do this. Now, I'm showing a complete lack of any form of manual dexterity here. It's not helping. Oh, hang on, we might be somewhere close to where it needs to be now. No, <laughs> we're not close at all. Now, why is that not going in? You would think it would, wouldn't you? Let's try again. Oh, yeah, one of mine's fell out, so I'm going to have to put that in again. Should have glued it in, shouldn't I? You're all there out in modelling land saying, ha ha, I told you. And I don't blame you, to be quite honest. Magnifier needed, because my old eyes are duff completely. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. This looks like a bit of a problem to me. Um, not quite sure how to how to deal with this. So that's not going all the way in. I'm just going to fire a little bit of material off that. I hope you can see this. I'll try that one more time. All this carefully painted silver paint is being rubbed off now. It's not silver, it's aluminium actually. Ah, there we go. Uh, the other one. Oh, that's better. What about that? There we go. Let's glue it in, shall we? Not with that much glue, though. That looks a bit better to me. That looks a bit better, so... Do the same on the other side. And get the old tweezers out again. Ah. Oh, I think I'm really the wrong way round in terms of how I'm doing this to make it particularly easy to do, but. better I think yes yes there we go all right glue that then in before it decides to fall out again so I have to do quite a lot of this through the magnifier but uh, because of my duff old eyes I'm afraid that's how we are all right that's better that looks all right so we can move that up and away now that was a bit of a performance it's got to be said but we got there in the end uh, put that away yes, that's the right way around put that away so that's that turn that round and put c18 in now i haven't removed c18 from the sprue but it's there so we can do that what I did do is painted it on the sprue, but I cut this sprue runner off here that was above here pointing downwards because it made it easier to paint the whole thing. A quick clean up. Not with the smooth side. That's probably not helpful, is it? There we 
go. That's not the side, I think that's. Need to mark one fingernail, and uh, yeah, that's fine. And that looks okay. So, painting that silver as well. So, again, that sits in behind that in that fashion there so we then have a channel with the spars where this and this sits in that sits in really nicely that's a really really good fit I'm just going to tack it a little bit just in there make sure we get that sighted properly But that is properly good fit, that one, I would have to say. And you see some of it, not a lot, but some. So as you look through the top here, and this isn't actually, let's see if we can move the lighting a little bit so that it's easier for you to see some of this, this stuff here. That might be better, hopefully it is. Um, yeah, so you can see some of the colour through there. Uh, it's going to need some touching up, though, around the edges of uh, these panels here. And there's virtually no step at all with those uh, wheel wells, so that's good. So let's just glue them in. That's that bit done. Oh, the dog's coming up the stairs now. He's probably going to mither me for his dinner. Next step is G44 and G45. These two sections here. So these are what you would mount the machine guns onto. So the barrels don't poke out the front. They're blanks that go into this section here. On a larger scale model, they'd be a bit bigger, but I'm not going to install them at all. There are some paint instructions called out here. So 78, which is, I think, cockpit green. Um, but we won't again I won't be doing that so um, that's all going to be closed up um, and uh, not visible so we know which sides which in terms of, of this because the holes are facing aft and there's a bit of an angle on these I've cleaned these up already oh hello and I've thrown them around so wider section here will go towards the center of the aircraft that's my understanding and I suspect that's the way up that goes yeah that would be the way to do it I would say so wider section towards the center um, I'll just Gun that in. Oh, lots of glue there, but that'll wick across anyway. That's quite good, that stuff. Never used it before. So that I think it looks like it might it's at the same level as the as the main spar. It looks like it's all part of the same thing. Or should be in the full scale aircraft, shall we say. So this section sits in like that. Make sure we get those sighted reasonably. Oh no, what am I doing? Look at that. Get that wick across. It smells a bit different from the other glue as well, I will say. So those sections now in so here's 27 28 to 32 to 33 and 34 machine guns in and so on and so forth so all this page not for us um, after this now it's putting the wing sections in um, top and bottom so 
word or two about these. These, um, I don't need that, I won't be looking to use that at all. These don't have locator pins in them at all, uh, which means that without the wheel well, the oleo, you know, the wheel, the wheel well, it's very hard to locate this properly to make certain that we get the um, all of the sections um, glued in properly. But with the wheel well, we've got a big helper, and obviously we've got the um, the tail of the uh, of the gun ports. So obviously they'll be covered up by the red um, the red decals later on. Now with these wing sections, um, on the full-sized aircraft, the this wing section could come off and is bolted on, um, and so it's not a permanent fixture. But on this on this particular um, model, uh, it's all part of the same thing. So we're going to have to make certain. You can see that I've done some sanding here. You have to ease material out here, or at least I did on my model. Um, it, you know, I had to ease material out to get this to fit in properly. Otherwise, what you get is a fairly enormous step there. Um, and I've managed to just about get rid of all of that. Um, but you give your heart in your mouth from time to time because it's you know you're taking quite a lot of material away by the look of it. But I think that um, this looks like the wheel well helps you to fit this fairly accurately by the look of things. I don't know where my pegs have gone. I think they're stuck in here. There's one. So we could get the wing sections on, I think, perfectly happily just now. I'll see if I can find some others. There should be in there, but... Oh, there go. I'll do this one at a time, I think. Uh, and my primary interest in actually in this is getting the, the front section to match up as near as possible so that I don't have big gaps to fill. There is going to be some gap filling required. I don't think there's any question about that, but oh, I keep jerking the bloody thing and moving it, which is not helpful, is it? go all right and as you can see that sits slightly apart I think what I'll do is I'll do the front section and let that dry and then do the back sections later that seems like a better move to me and then I can sand out any any gaps from there so that doesn't um, yeah, I'm going to put another peg in here, and then I can glue from there. Right, looks like I could get that glued on. Now the other thing I want to do as well is to make sure that this fits okay, and this the 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 join butts up properly with this, which it. Oh, look at that. That looks like it's going to as well. Ah, oh, now here we are, look. That's so that on on the um port wing that's located up that well is located up in there and I've lost it now there it is <laughs> there it is um, let's just use that peg a minute to hold that so I know that's butted into the right place there are no steps to speak of there that's fit pretty pretty well there See if I can find one more peg. There we go. Let's just hold that in there. So let's have a look and see what the fit's like here. There's a bit of a gap. Now, I'm not going to be able to say so that's quite a large, that's quite a large gap, I think. I'm not going to be able to move the wheel wells at all. So that's that's not going to happen. 
Uh, now that means that um, I'm going to have to put this on and then try and get it as central as possible and I'm going to have a gap to fill. So we know that's the case, so I might as well get used to the idea. At the bottom, yeah, that looks like it could be okay. At the front, mm, yeah, we've got a bit of work to do anyway. I don't think there's any doubt about that. We do have a bit of work to do. So that's just what we have to um, live with. And that's the only way that we can we can actually do this. So there we are, not to worry. Um, I need to get our knickers in a twist about that. So I'm going to just, I'm going to peg that down. I'm going to do this starboard wing to start with at the front. Yeah, there's no real gaps there. And oh, 31 minutes so far, so I don't want to do a long video, but what I'll do is I'll do this one um, and then I'll do the other one off camera and we'll come back to this at some stage in the, in the near future. Maybe less than eight days away, because that's how long ago my last video was out. See, that's nearly empty. Needs to. Let's get those glued in there. There's no glue, um, there's no peg touching on that section, so I can just let the glue wick across there. So, there we go. I think we should be about there. Yeah, so, there we go. Um, wing sections, um, together with little problems um, such as they are, uh, let's just see if we can put a little bead of glue around the, um, the wheel well, just to help that bond. There we go, that should wick around there. I'll leave that for a couple of hours and then do the starboard wing in the same way. Um, then we'll do the rear section. So when I come back, all that will be done. Hopefully the cockpit will be done and I'll, I'll have inserted it into this and we'll be in a position where I can uh, complete uh, effectively the putting of this together, um, the gluing of it in um, and possibly some uh, additional um, um, gap filling and so on. Um, and they're going to be quite wide gaps, so we've got quite a lot to do there. Anyway. Look, thanks very much once again for visiting. Very much appreciate your time. Hope that uh, that was entertaining uh, and um, that it was all on camera. Take care until the next time. Bye for now.